Welcome, welcome to Shadow Me Too. I've never had this happen before, um, but I was just in the middle of an unboxing when my camera turned off and when I and my phone turned off and everything, um, it's gone. So I got to this point. We already unwrapped the package, but we're undoing the Nicoletta uh, Ciccoli, Ciccoli, Ciccoli. Nicoletta Ciccoli. That's what we're going to say. Tarot. The Nicol Anyways, I just did her um, her shadow deck or her oracle deck also. Um, so look for that also. But these, the artwork in this is incredible. And I guess I'm starting over now. Um, but this is a low Scarabo, um deck. Um, it has just a little 19 page booklet. Um, I'm going to read each of the little blurbs to you because the deck is so interesting. Um and we get to start over <laughs> um and here we go um the good news is i already know what some of these cards mean now that i've gone through the deck a little bit um but here we start with the fool card and this one is just be, um you know beat of your own drum kind of thing okay here we go take two of the nicoletta Ciccoli tarot i hope i'm saying her name right um, fool, march to the beat of your own drum. No one can guide you better than your own heart. Number one, the magician. All the power you need is within you. Seize your own magic and use your will to make changes in your world. Two, the high priestess. Your wisdom springs from the earth, the stars, and ancient cosmic knowledge. Trust what you know to be true. Three, the Empress. All of nature is connected and you are part of that whole. Take good care of the Earth's creatures and receive their love in return. Four, the Emperor. Power is yours to command. Others look to you for leadership. Now is the time to build your empire. Five, the Hierophant. Make sure your spiritual teachers are authentic and trustworthy. Look beyond the trappings of the religion or of religion to seek the truth. Six, the lovers. A choice is offered to you that could change everything. Listen to your heart's guidance. Follow the path of love. And what I like about this um, card too is it really kind of takes on the feminine side of the of the lovers, the traditional lover, lovers card. You can see that a female image is actually inside of the tree, the fruited tree um, that has the snake kind of going um, through it. Um, it appears that there are some mountains um, in the background um, with with clouds. Um, I would almost say like with the apples blowing off of there, it might be windy where she <laughs> where she is. Um, but it says to follow the path of love. And in this case, if she's following the path of love, she's loving herself first. Um, I don't know. Interesting, interesting um, choice. Love, love yourself first. Do what's best for you is kind of really what I think the message for this card for me is what I, I will use for this deck. Uh, in any case, number seven. Uh, the Chariot, it's time to move forward, taking the reins of your life in your own hands by acting decisively now. You will also help others. Number eight is the Justice. This is, um, Rider Waite does not have Justice as number eight. It has it as number 11. I'm not sure which of the other decks has it or started it as eight, whether it's like a Marcial deck or a Toth deck or, or, um, Let's see, we have the Thoth or the Thoth, I don't know, the Toth Tarot, um, the Hermetic Tarot, the Marcial Tarot, the Aquarian Tarot. There's so many different versions of the Tarot, but um, one or two or more of them um, put the Justice card at number 11 instead of number, um, or put the Justice card as number 8 instead of number 11, like what I'm accustomed to with the Rider Waite. Um, anyways, if you know why that is, please comment below. I have a feeling like, I feel like I, um, more European decks seem to have like the justice card as number, um, eight than I think other decks or, you know, more, I just wonder which one it's based off is, is it based off of Marcial? Is it based off of, cause it's not right or weight that's doing it, um, or that has that. 
Justice card is number eight. Anyways, take care to maintain your ethical balance. Any move you make now will have consequences. Act for the highest good. Number nine, the hermit. Be silent for a time and shut out all external influences. Retreat into solitude to see your way more clearly. Ten, the wheel of fortune. We are all at the mercy of fate. Don't struggle against your destiny. As time passes, the situation will improve. Eleven, strength. Good will always triumph over evil in the long run. You are fighting the good fight. Trust your instincts. The hanged man. Suspend your disbelief and surrender to a new way of looking at things. Expand the limits of your consciousness. 13. Death. Something must end so that something better can begin. Do not cling to what you thought you were. Awaken. Reborn. Temperance. Number 14. Find a blend of that earthly and spiritual within you. You are not bound to mundane matters unless you choose to be. The Devil. Nothing good can, or this is number 15, nothing good can come of this situation. Free yourself from its bondage. Do not be blinded by temptation. The Tower. All right. The structures you built may not be as stable as you think. Prepare yourself for change. Expect the unexpected. 17. The universe sings its eternal song of hope and beauty. Listen and find your own harmonic place in the cosmos. The moon. There are many mysteries in the depths of the unconscious. Pay attention to your dreams in the realms of your imagination. The sun, number 19. All good things are coming to you now. Open your hands to receive them. Sweet happiness is yours for the taking. She is the queen bee, right? She's got, she's definitely the queen bee. She is the hive. The bees are all coming towards her. Um, I always think of that card as an inner child card, but I almost feel like th there's a shadow side to this a little bit. Um, just because of the darkness in the card. Um, the sweet happiness is definitely the honey. Um, I don't know what, just a very, just a very cool, interesting picture. Bees always represent community to me as well. Um, so I almost feel like sweet happiness is all around. We go to the judgment card. The path you have chosen has led you to your present place. The key to liberation is to accept and understand this. 21, the world. Everything seems complete and perfect just as it is, but don't be afraid to shake things up. A new pattern will emerge. And we go on to the ace of cups. Love must begin with, with self-love. Be as kind to yourself as you are to others, and love will increase in your life. You have the Two of Cups. Your soul's twin is near, whether that relationship is romantic or not. The true affinity with a like-minded person is offered. Three of Cups. Happiness is multiplied when you share it with friends. Dive into your friendships and rejoice in good company. Four of Cups. You have shut out the pleasures of the world and are in danger of becoming cynical. There is no excuse for being bored with life. Five of Cups. Something you thought would make you happy has turned it out to be a disappointment. Don't force the issue if it will never work out. Six of Cups. Look into your deepest memories to remember who you are and what makes you happy. Let others help you find yourself again.
Too many choices can cause confusion. If you're not sure what to choose, don't choose yet. Let things settle down and it will become clear. Eight of Cups. Emotional upset is keeping you from making any meaningful progress. Don't cling to resentments and pain. Set them free. Nine of Cups. Whatever delights you can imagine can be yours now, if you believe. Set your intention to be blissfully fulfilled. Make a wish. Ten of Cups. Your allies and comp companions will see you through any dangers. You are on the path of success and happiness thanks to their loving help. Oh, that's right. Um, they have this separated out in the book, even though they have it in order in the, in the deck. So it's going to just take me a second. Um, they're calling this the knave of cups. One who has an innocent dreamy nature can be emotionally vulnerable and oversensitive. Then we have the knight of cups. One who obeys the commands of the heart does not hesitate in the pursuit of a righteous cause. Then we have the Queen of Cups, one who is motivated by love, can be a psychic, can be psychic or clairvoyant, a seeker of things unseen. And the King of Cups, one who can control, controls emotions, knows how to use relationships in order to get things done. And then we go back to the Ace of Discs. What was once what? What was only imagined before is now manifesting. New projects and possibilities are emerging. Two of discs. Oop. It's hard to keep many projects successfully happening um, at once. If you are in danger of dropping any of them, consider setting some aside for now. Three of discs. Don't try to do everything on your own. Good advice is at hand and others can help you make the right decisions for success. Four of discs. Find possessions uh, uh, alone would, won't bring contentment. Don't focus on material gain to point where you are separated from life's true joys. Five or the five of discs. Loneliness makes it hard to see your way out of the darkness. Don't get stuck in self-pity. Look to others for guidance and encouragement. Um, if you purchase this deck, you're going to be looking for these clues at the top of the um, the card here. This is looks like a flower, so it's going to be pentacles. Before we had um, cups here at the top. And coming up, we have what? Wands and swords going up there so just kind of things to just notice if you're looking at purchasing this deck um okay i know i think i already read this but five of discs loneliness makes it hard to see your way out of the darkness don't get stuck in self-pity look to others for guidance and encouragement the six of discs you have more than enough resources to share. When you offer some of your prosperity to others, you will make room for more to return to you. And then seven of discs. Take your time to create something you can be proud of. Excellence takes time. Hold true to your vision of what you will achieve with patience. Then we have the eight of discs. Learning new skills and improving existing skills may require the help of a teacher who inspires by example. Find such a teacher or offer your own experience to others. The nine of discs. The simple pleasures of home life will give you the greatest satisfaction now. Find your comfort zone and settle there in solitude to find peace and quiet. The Ten of Pentacles, or Discs, there is no limit to what you can achieve now. Material prosperity may come to you in unexpected ways. And, all right, now we go back to the court cards, and we have 
the Page of Pentacles or the Knave of Pentacles or Knave of Discs. One who is grounded in the teachings of nature possesses an understanding of the natural world. The Knight of Pentacles um, or Discs. One who fights against injustice and protects the oppressed always works on behalf of the weak and wounded. The Queen of Discs, um, one who gives abundantly of all of life's sweetness, generous and motherly, a resource for wealth. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about her as the Queen of Pentacles. Um, but I guess I understand like how the Queen of Pentacles would always taste all of the sweetest things in life. Um, she is rich. She is abundant. Um, so I guess I can see. I guess it's the child that throws me off for her being a queen. And the bottom of the card here denotes the the. So here's the king, the queen. This horse is the knight and then the. Helmet is the page. Um, so you'll see it kind of just shows you which court cards you're, you're looking at um, based on this symbol here. And then, of course, the pentacle or the element symbol at the top. Okay. All right. So she is the queen of pentacles and she's tasting the sweetest things in life. <laughs> And then we have the King of Pentacles, um, or the King of Discs, one who brings practical solutions and personal power to any situation, pushes through barriers to success. Then we have the Ace of Wands. And let's go back to you. A new passion has captured you. This is the time of great creative potential seize the moment and take advantage of the fiery energy available to you now two of wands illusion or enchantment may be keeping you from fulfilling your potential for success do not be overly influenced by attractive people and their plans for you three of wands assess your losses and your gains now and if you if necessary change your goals to align with new information be on the alert for those who could thwart you four four of wands move quickly through your present circumstance uh circumstances your work is moving towards success but you are not there yet the time of rest and celebration must be earned hmm that's interesting. Um, so I feel like that Four of Wands is a huge deviation from the Rider Waite deck in both the symbolism of the image and also in the meaning within the book. Um, because they look like they are celebrating right here to me. Just saying. So it does just look symbolically like a deviation. Um, from the writer weight. All right, moving on to the uh, five of wands. Uh, remain calm in the face of perceived obstacles. They do not threaten you in any serious way. Find ways to placate your possible foes. All right, six of wands. You are on top of the world now. Your achievements are secure. Your spirits are high and your allies are supportive and loyal. Victory is yours. Oh, the seven of wands. It looks like the devil is spanking that poor child. Uh, some mistakes may need to be atoned for and situations set right. Take care that the punished punishment fits the crime. Don't hold a grudge. Hmm. So this is a child, I think, who's made a mistake, I think, is the representation there. Um...
Or maybe spanking your child is something you need to atone for. Um, that's just an interesting, um, interesting card because I've always interpreted this as taking the high ground. Um, but, you know, having to atone for something that you did or set right something, um, having to have it, you know, to be able to come off of defense, perhaps just apologizing, um, compromising and in, in negotiating an agreement. Um, I'll, I'll definitely, I, I definitely learned something from this, this, this deck. All right. So number eight, eight of wands, messages of light and hope are coming to you from many sources. Pay attention or you may miss them. Be prepared to take swift action. Nine of wands, all the power you need will be at your disposal when the time is right. You can relax for the moment and trust that you'll know when to act. Continue to build up your strength. Ten of Wands, the energy in the situation is oppressive and overwhelming. You will only be more confused and exhausted if you persist. Step aside and let things settle down. And the Page of Wands, um, or the Knave of Wands, one who is learning about magic and energy, needs practice to control, um, the will and make sense of the chaos. The Knight of Wands. One who seeks adventure and excitement can indicate a desire to travel or explore risky environments. Then we have the Queen of Wands. One who attracts others through beauty and charisma can be overconfident, frivolous, or arrogant. The King of Wands, one who dominates any situation through the force of leadership, needs to keep control of anger and impulsiveness. And then we go back to the Ace of Swords, which I've always interpreted as being clarity of thought um, or new thoughts, new ideas. Um, more like thoughts, new thoughts. Um, but Ace of Swords, happiness is that is one at the cost of another's misery is not worth the price. Consider any new opportunities presented to you and weigh their potential for harm. The Two of Swords. Proceed slowly with caution. The situation holds possible danger or failure, but if you are careful and pay attention to details, you can reach your goal. Um, I always look at that picture as she's between a rock and a hard place. That's it. I don't know why I always that saying always comes to mind. But that's when I, when I look at the Rider Waite um, deck that I see that there's, you know, she's between a rock and a hard place. Um, for this deck though, um, proceed slowly and with caution. Um, the situation holds possible danger or failure, but if you're careful and pay attention to details, you can reach your goal. That's quite the balancing act. Um, twos are always some sort of balance, right? Some sort of choice. Um, but yeah, swords are dangerous. <laughs> I think they all are. All right, let's see this, what they say about this one. Is it still heartbreak? Um, affairs of the heart do not go well, but the situation may be exaggerated and not as bad as it seems. Take time apart to regain perspective before continuing or communicating. And then we have the Four of Swords. Quiet your swirling mind. It's time to rest and sort things through. Do not take any further action. Take care of your mental and physical health. The Five of Swords. The situation is not winnable. Someone is not playing fair or the odds are just too great against you. Retreat and live to fight another day. Oops. Six of Swords. When something has failed or be, been defeated, it takes time to recover. Seek out whatever help you need to heal from the situation. If you're the victor, do not gloat. Seven 
of sorts. Do not cheat or take shortcuts to achieve your objectives and be watchful for unethical behavior in others. Plots and secrets are possible. Be on the alert for deception. Eight of Swords. Uncertainty and suspicion rob you of your independence, making you feel trapped or helpless. Get your facts straight and don't be intimidated by mere shadows. Nine of Swords. Your nightmares are creeping through into your waking world and your fears are justified. Either stay quiet until the crisis passes or stand and face it bravely. Ten of Swords. The situation is ruined and it's time to cut your losses. Grieve for what might have been, but don't stay in that dark place too long. Gather your courage and begin again. The Page of Swords, or the Knave of Swords, one who has an inquiring mind, always seeking to know more, needs positive outlets for uh, curiosity. Then we have the Knight of Swords, and he is one who rushes in without adequate planning, may harm others through carelessness and reckless haste. The Queen of Swords, one who wields quiet power behind the scenes, may be more dangerous than is easily perceived. And then the King of Swords, one who plans and strategizes through thoroughly before acting, brings a brilliant mind to any situation. Um, it has its own little, um, it's got a bittersweet two card reading. Give me something sweet. Give me something um, bitter. Um, and then read them together. Um, the sweetness and the bitterness of any situation. So very, very cool. I think this is an amazing deck. You guys will definitely have to let me know what you think of it. I am going to continue on and do the um, deck interview because I'm stoked to work with it. Um, but um, if you can't stay with me, um, you know, the extra 10 or 15 minutes to do that I understand but if you wouldn't mind liking subscribing and sharing maybe hitting that reminder bell to let you know um, uh, when I post a new video or a new unboxing um and let's go ahead and shuffle oh I meant to show you um it is slightly I, I want to say it's almost exactly the same size maybe a card difference three or four card difference between my old 30 year old Rider weight paper deck um, and it's a good so it's a good card stock it's good it's thick I, I mean it's comfortable so let's see here let's see we're just gonna give her a good shuffle it's really good to shuffle. Um, I would probably never read this deck in um, at, with reversals. Um, there's no reversals in that little um, book. Um, and I think really what I look for is the feeling that it conveys, I guess, um, in the image. Because they're relatively dark images. In my opinion. Now I always shuffle a minimum of six times, um, but with the new deck I just shuffle until the card feels like it has my energy. My first question of any deck is what personality does this deck have? time to say that we're done. <laughs> um, what personality does this deck have? Oh wow, I just wanted to pop right out. Uh, that is the Ten of Pentacles. 
So the Ten of Pentacles is, I mean, that's an abundance card, um, but I just forgot what we just read, so I'm just going to read it again. There's no limit to what you can achieve now. Material prosperity may come to you in unexpected ways, especially through the help of others. So this is a rich, prosperous deck. I feel like it's a rich, rich, like a rich chocolate cake or rich, wealthy, abundant in, in all aspects of its vision and its messages. That's, I feel like it's a wealthy, abundant deck. All right. So what is your strength? Wow, it just pops right messages right out. That's great. Um, we have the Seven of Swords. Um, so the Seven of Swords um, is typically a de de deception. Um, so I almost feel like um, when you're deceiving yourself, when someone else is deceiving you, this might be a deck that you would want to go to. Um, seven of swords it says do not cheat or take shortcuts to achieve your objectives and be watchful for unethical behaviors in others plots and secrets are possible be on the alert for deception so i feel like it's going to help you kind of you know see the things that you should be suspicious of what is your weakness what is your weakness this this really does shuffle very nicely to you what is your weakness Cards are like people, they don't like to admit their weaknesses either. What is your weakness? What is your weakness? What can't you do? What is your weakness? What is your weakness? I'm going to take that one and none of those because that one flipped over um, and there's just too many because there's just too many. So this is um, number um, 11. It's the strength card. Um, it can't be your own inner strength. I can see that. Um, that makes a whole lot of sense to me. How will you help me to grow? How will you help me to grow? How will you help me to grow? Five of Pentacles. And the Five of Pentacles um, is reaching out for others' help, I think, in this deck, is what it said. Um, Loneliness makes it hard to see your way out of the darkness. Don't get stuck in self-pity. Look to others for guidance and encouragement. Um, so I feel like um, learning to ask for help is a way that it will help help me to grow. Um, when should I call on you for guidance? When should I call on you for guidance? I almost feel like she's calling on guidance from spirit, right? She's she's looking for truth, truthful thoughts to come um, through her mind or come into her head. Um, when should I call on you for guidance? When should I call on you for guidance? Seven of Pentacles. A Seven of Pentacles? Probably, I feel like when you're ruminating, I feel like she's ruminating. When she's spinning her webs right there, I feel like she's ruminating. Um, so, if I call on you for guidance, it's probably because I'm ruminating. Um, that's a really good reason for me to call on it. A deck of cards is because I'm ruminating. Um, it says, take your time to create something you can be proud of. Excellence takes time. Hold true to your vision of what you will achieve with patience. What is the best way to work with you? 
What is the best way to work with you? What is the best way to work with you? way to work with you. Ten of Swords when things are ending. When things are ending and you can't force them to work, it's over. Um, when the situation is ruined and it's time to cut your losses, when it's time to grieve for what might have been, um, so I kind of feel like it's really here to help you pull you out of those darker places. Um, what will our relationship be like? What will our relationship be like? What will our relationship be like? Ooh, a balancing act. Um, a cautionary tale. <laughs> right? She's got to be cautious and balance up there so she knows the direction that she's going. So our relationship will be proceeding slowly with caution. The situation holds possible danger or failure. But if you're careful and pay attention to details, you can reach your goal. All right, so there you go. This does feel very much like an advanced deck. Um, even though I would say it's like a big, no, it's an advanced deck. This is an advanced deck. Um, but once you just know like basic keywords, you know, like inner strength, you'll figure out what the strength card is, um, you know, and slaying your dragons, um, like what she's doing here, um, you know, and then kind of picking up on like, Okay, birds are usually thoughts. They, they're air, you know, in terms of elements, they're the air element, which is thoughts um, and ideas. And um, some thoughts and ideas can kind of cut you to the core. Um, she's, think, she's pulling in new thoughts and ideas from the ether, or her guides are bringing her new thoughts and ideas from the ether. Um, so there's a lot... Um, th there's a lot of symbolism. There's a lot of um, emotion in these cards. Um, definitely a shadow deck for me, though. Um, but you guys have to tell me what you think of this deck. I think it's gorgeous. I think the artwork is pretty amazing. Um, but yeah, definitely let me know what you think. Um, thumbs up just lets me know that I'm doing a good job. It also tells um, Google that you want to see more of my videos um, or that they should show more of my videos. It's an algorithm thing. I don't know. But if you would be kind enough to like, subscribe, and share, that would be very much appreciated. And comments, like I said, just help the channel grow. Thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful, blessed day.